Facebook or Twitter to make it. The outsider by Albert Camus. It's again the same problem which the we face. It's a very small group, hardly one to 20 pages. And I also read it twice. But I doubt I managed to capture even 20% of what the book can see. This book is boundless. I think this book mainly talks about the mistrust between individuals that we use in them. Or don't hate what you can't understand. I think it's a uh, lyrics of Hogan, the Hogan and so on. So that is what I also thought this book mainly talks about. Now this book is largely against my very romantic view of life. I like to think that people are emotional, driven, passionate beings. And the decisions we make and the motives behind it, they are usually very you know, deeply felt or well thought out that there is no behind it. But, and so because of this assumption of mine, it naturally follows that I expect people to behave a certain way. And uh, I'm not saying I'm judgmental. I'm not. I try to be as, keep my mind as broad as possible, be as uh, accepting of things as possible. But sometimes it is an active process. And because I think we are inherently very judgmental. So it is an active process sometimes to not be judgmental. So it did come as a surprise when this book showed me that I still had a lot of non judging, active non judging to do. And especially in areas I don't give much thought to, usually. Now, the central character of this book, he's very much against my idea of these emotional, passionate, driven beings. He's very simple there. He's very content with his life the way it is. He wakes up, he goes to office, he comes back, he puts, puts his food, he goes to sleep, he does the same thing again. On weekends, when he doesn't have company, he'll pass the Sunday by sitting on the balcony, watching people on the street. And he's happy with it. And this frankly drives me crazy because I am exactly opposite. I am usually quite restless. I am very obsessed with this concept of growth. And I am very against this concept of being content. I can't feel it. Okay. So when I saw this guy and he's happy with it and he's hopefully saying that I have no problem with my life being the way it is. This boss asks him, like, don't you have any ambitions? And he says, no, I'm fine. He says, I had ambitions when I was in college, like we all do right now. And but then I stopped bothering with it. That really scares me, which has happened to me later in life. So, and I wonder what happened to him when we stopped being that way. And, and this guy is very peculiar. His feelings are a lot of times strangely governed by his physical needs. He feels hot all the time. Like all the time. And so much that he can't function. He's so obsessed with feeling hot, he can't function. So much that because of that, he accidentally kills a man all day. He killed a man because he was feeling hot and because he was also accidentally carrying a gun. And frankly, that's, that's, that's all there was to the murder. It was an accident. For which he gets tried in court. He accepts it. He killed a man. The defense lawyer knows. The public prosecutor knows. Everybody knows he killed a man. A straightforward case might be. So usually for such kind of crime, they give a life, uh, uh, lifelong uh, jail sentence or jail sentence. But here the public prosecutor was trying to get him a capital punishment. And there what happens is people stop looking at his crime, at what he did. They in fact start looking at him, at his person. The public prosecutor very proudly posts the object in court that I've eaten into this guy's soul and I found out that he was a monster. Like he was really simple. And that, um, uh, that really made me think of the way we judge each other and how what our beliefs 
assumptions are and what our assumptions are about each other can largely be very independent of what that person is and what he does. In fact, uh, our family character, in fact, he feels like he was important at the time was going on. It was about him. And you see that I felt like it's going on independently of him. Nobody asks of my opinions. Nobody asks of me of what I feel about this. If neither does the uh, defense lawyer ask him what he feels. Nothing. The defense lawyer is really different. Yet he's not taking his opinion about anything. And the public prosecutor is doing his own job. So that does make me feel a thing that that's how we look at each other. And how we judge each other intent, uh, in, uh, intentionally or un unintentionally, regardless of what we do. And that's why I feel like we don't know and we don't connect with other people on that basis. Uh, when, I, when I read about this guy, he seemed very simple to me. And it came across that he's someone I knew. He's your every other person there is, and yet he's someone I've never met. And another question which this raised was I told you how it was very disturbing for me to accept that he's a contented, happy soul. I am not like that. But is it really inferior to enjoy life as it is? And is it really wrong to be happy the way you are? I I don't think so. Yeah, that also made me think of uh, how suddenly nowadays housewives is a very derogatory term. Like now we have women who are working outside, there are a lot of women who find the other women who chose to stay at home and do that work to be very inferior. Like, why are you not going outside and working? But I find that to okay. And there's one more in the end, he's sitting in his uh, prison cell and he says that uh, for the first few days when he starts to get out of his mouth, he was, uh, he used to think like a free man. So suddenly he'd want to go out for a walk, go to the beach, swimming. And then he was suddenly reminded, oh, I can't do that. I'm in prison. And later he started getting used to the life in prison. He starts looking forward to his daily activities, to the guard making his home, to him going out doing labor. He starts looking forward to it and stops thinking beyond it or he stops uh, wishing beyond it. So that was very scary because that made me feel like we are all somewhere in our own prison, our minds and our lives. That maybe we are getting used to it. At least I felt like somewhere I am, so I'm constantly in big distress about it. So that's what it reminded me of. But all said and done, this guy was very true. Very true to himself. He never pretended to feel what he could not. He never said what he couldn't feel. In fact, uh, he had a girlfriend who proposed to him for marriage. And he very passively agrees. And he also said that I could have easily said yes to any other woman had I said or shared the same kind of relationship with him. So much for romantic proposals. So he doesn't understand the concept of love. He says love doesn't mean anything. There's nothing called love. It's just getting used to it. You get used to a person, you love that person. You get used to your home. So we have this homely feeling towards your house. Like there's nothing called nostalgia because you were used to that experience that one point of time. So I couldn't digest this. I I wouldn't. But again, since I am this way, does it give me a right to question his way of living? And does it give me a right to put him down? And I think that's what ultimately the monitor is about.